what is up guys, it's Bing the Tech Avenger. It has been an absolutely crazy two months in the tech world as shots were fired from the likes of Google, Apple, and even Microsoft. Today, we are going to take a look at the new 11.5 inch iPad Pro, a new entry in the line of professional oriented tablets, which Apple has been pushing for the last three years to replace your primary computer. So we have to ask ourselves, can it really do what Apple claims? Before we answer the question of whether or not an iPad can be your main computer, let's actually take a look at what comes in the box. All right, opening the box, I can find the tablet itself, a power brick, a set of instructions, and finally, a USB-C cable. About time, Apple. The tablet itself is well-built and comes in two sizes, 11.5 inch and 12.9. Both can come in either space gray or silver, with golden rose gold being exclusive to last year's 10.5 inch iPad which I'm not really sure why that is. Storage configuration is the same for both tablets, which starts off at 64 gigabytes and goes all the way up to one terabyte. While the 11.5 inch iPad can be had for $1,000 Canadian without tax, the 12.9 inch starts at $1,250, going all the way up to $2,200 for a full spec model. One thing to note is that both of these models are roughly the same size as their older siblings from last year. As you can see, the exterior has received a major overhaul in terms of the design department. The home button is now permanently gone from all 2018 Apple products. It was replaced by Apple's Face ID Authenticator, introduced in last year's iPhone X. The tablet has a similar stereo setup with speakers on both ends of the device. On the top of the camera, you can find the power button and to the side, a volume rocker, as well as a front and rear facing camera with resolutions of 8 and 12 megapixels respectively. I don't like how the camera protrudes from the tablet, but this can be rectified by just putting on a case. Everything that was great about the previous versions of the iPad can be found here. It has a wicked fast processor, it is light and portable to carry around everywhere, and the display is one of the best you can get on any tablet that you could find. The processors used in Apple's iPads and iPhones have improved immensely over the past few years, with Apple even claiming that their 12X Bionic chipset is more powerful than 92% of computers out there, which many reviewers have tested this and found true. Add to the fact that Adobe recently announced that the full version of Photoshop will be available in the App Store next year, we can expect many more powerful applications to come. But as of right now, there is actually very little that really takes advantage of all that computing power. This is complemented by both the Apple Pencil and the keyboard covered, which is sold separately. I mentioned in my Surface Go video that everyone that's buying a Surface device should also get the keyboard. And I still stand by that opinion, but I don't necessarily feel the same way about the iPad. This mainly comes down to operating system though, as Windows 10 was not designed as a tablet interface, whereas iOS was always intended to be used in this form factor. We didn't actually buy the keyboard case as we weren't a fan of its price nor the feel of it, but we do happen to have a Logitech K80 Bluetooth keyboard to use with the iPad. The pencil, however, has been gracefully updated so that it can magnetically attach itself to the side of the iPad Pro to charge. A very welcome change, though they really should have implemented this way back on the original iPad Pro. It is worth mentioning that both first party accessories weren't designed for backward compatibility. The pencil and the keyboard case from previous years are not compatible with the latest iPad Pro. In regards to the camera, Apple didn't really say much about it other than its overall specs. And like all other tablet manufacturers, the camera is not the highlight feature of this device, unlike for their smartphone counterparts. In our tests, both cameras actually produce a decently clean image and in good lighting, it can work really well. Now, I've talked about iPad displays before and Apple continues to deliver, though there isn't really much new to say about it other than the fact that it has the same resolution, the same ProMotion technology from last year, except it's an inch bigger. That's not a bad thing, as I do think that last year's iPad still has one of the best displays on the market. Some say that the AMOLED screen found in the Galaxy Tab S4 is better for watching movies and viewing pictures, and I have no doubt that this holds true, but it's also a matter of preference. I would still choose the iPad screen as I would much rather have a higher refresh rate, but if Samsung's next tablet incorporates 120 Hz refresh rate or higher on their AMOLED displays, I would probably jump on that right away. 
Apple doesn't give out much information on the iPad Pro's battery. All that was stated is that it will run all day. We didn't have as much opportunity as we would have liked to put it through its paces, but in our tests, doing some light browsing, playing videos, and a bit of note taking throughout three to four days brought it down to only 20%. We expect that the battery life should be very similar, if not slightly below that of the 10.5 inch iPad Pro from last year, as it has almost the same size chassis, but with a larger display. Everything that I said about the new iPad has been very positive, but don't let that fool you. As polished as the hardware is, it's not without its faults. Okay, so before we go into that, a full disclosure. I have been a long time fan of the iPad line. From the very first iteration that was released back in 2010, the iPad had set the bar for tablet computers, bringing ease of use, portability, reliability, as well as speed for those that needed something more portable than the average laptop. But that was almost 10 years ago, and since then, the consumer tech space has changed a lot. Laptops are far thinner and lighter, tablets from other manufacturers have really upped their game, and some even offer more functionality than Apple's offering. The Samsung Galaxy Tab S4 comes to mind. In that time, however, the iPad has grown faster, slimmer, and now can rival many laptops in storage space. So what's the problem? Well. My issue with the iPad is that it's still really just an iPad. Apple has done such a good job with the non-pro version of the iPad that I don't really see a reason to spend the extra $500 to $1,700 more for a device that does virtually the same thing. And even worse, all versions of the iPad Pro start with only 64 gigabytes of RAM, which is not even close to being enough for professionals. Yes, you have the option to upgrade it, but really Apple should have started with at least 128 gigs at the very minimum. Okay, so the iPad Pro is very fast with its latest processor, but very few applications on the App Store actually utilize it to the full potential, with maybe the exception of Adobe's full Photoshop app that is gonna be coming next year. All in all, the iPad Pro as a desktop or laptop replacement still has the same nuances as the original iPad when it was first introduced. And that nuance is actually iOS. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not bashing on iOS. I think it's actually a great platform for those that don't have a lot of requirements for the computing device. And that is where I think the iPad Pro really shines. The problem is that Apple keeps trying to advertise it as a computer replacement, despite having limitations that prevent it from being a true professional device. A few examples are, one, not being able to connect to USB-based external storage. So you can actually connect cameras to the iPad and import photos, but that's really it. You can't get any sort of documents or any other files. And two, iPads are touch-only devices, which works well for some people, but for real productivity, having the option to use a mouse can really speed up your workflow. Now, number three, oftentimes you will have to either find a workaround or a compromise. Four. Applications on the Apple App Store is varied and often pretty useful, but the content creation apps are usually simplified versions of their desktop counterparts, with some exceptions. That being said, I personally know individuals who use an iPad as their only computing device, and they absolutely swear by it. But then again, they have completely different requirements from the tablet than I do. Now, even though I don't think that iOS is good for a laptop replacement operating system, I do enjoy using it overall as a consumption device. And again, this is really the area where the iPad Pro shines. So why should you consider the iPad Pro? The truth is, in terms of capability, the regular iPad 9.7 inch does everything the Pro versions can do. If you do plan on buying the iPad Pro as a computer replacement, my advice is to keep your expectations within reason and don't listen to what Apple says. This can only replace a computer for a small group of people, and not everyone. That may change in future versions, but Apple has a lot of work to do to make that happen. As an example, when we tried the iPad Pro to edit our photos, we found that we can only import JPEG or RAW, but we couldn't import both versions of the same photo. This is a very confusing limitation, and it almost makes it seem that Apple has no idea what professionals need out of their products. Well, that's it for today. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up, and if you never wanna miss another video, hit that subscribe button, and check us out on Patreon, Twitter, and Instagram in the link below. We post new tech reviews and videos weekly. Let us know your thoughts on Apple's new iPad Pro in the comment section down below. Big out.